me to talk about immigration, I jumped at the chance because it's, you can tell any story you want. A tragic, you know, uh, uplifting, you know, r rags to riches or, or thwarted <coughs> opportunities. You can really paint, it, paint the picture any way you want. Um, I've, um, uh, my own grandfather, uh, great-grandfather escaped uh, uh, a, a nasty upbringing in Ireland. Uh, everyone has their own stories. And um, I think the, r the real question is less about who's oppressing whom and more about the city itself. Um, I, I feel strongly that the city is the kind of the best invention our civilization has to offer. Uh, and the reason I say that is because it's green, and the other reason I say it is because it's a machine for allowing all of us to make ourselves better, right? Um, my co-author, Robert Campbell, says the city is the place where you get the most choices in the least space. Um, everybody hear me okay? So they're getting in the back? Good, all right. Um, yeah. So, um, especially in the, in, since 2008, in the recession, when energy costs a lot more, uh, New Yorkers, as we all know, are more fit and consume less energy per capita than any other community in the United States. Right? Um, the challenge, the whole, the big picture here today, and, and my short, uh, try to keep this about a half an hour, is uh, is trying to look at the city as this machine to allow human development uh, for it, for everybody, all the way across the board. Every immigrant immigrant group has its heroes, and everyone has its scoundrels. You, you, that that's that just goes across the board, and I think that um, to the extent that you you encourage institutions like Northeastern, that, that allow people to come in and come out better, presumably, uh, you, you're doing the right thing. Um, so the format is gonna be simple. Uh, I'm gonna start with a, a lot of, you're gonna see a lot of then and now pictures. Um, and I'm gonna give some background on that. Uh, here we go. I uh, was the author of this book. I co-authored it with Robert Campbell. Uh, he and I did this book in, in 1991. And uh, this was going to be, here's what I was going to do. Since I have a background in architecture, I was going to uh, get rid of these boxes. You know, These things were built in the 80s. And this book was going to celebrate these marvelous old staunch uh, quality uh, colonial and federal architecture that we had, such beautiful buildings. And we're just stop with these dumb things, right? OK, it was going to like, I was, a, I was a torchbearer, OK? It's a really good book, because uh, they're exact then and now pictures taken of the same sites across 100 years. And Campbell is a Pulitzer Prize winning writer, OK? And so you get these marvelous uh, then and now. Here we are. Let's see, see, the, see the, <laughs> the true ravages of time. <laughs> and um, now, here's, here's, the, here's the cool story. Uh, so the book comes out. Houghton Mifflin did it, Peter Davison. And uh, Kevin White calls me up. It's Vanna Walker, get this book, bring your book in here. This is great. I go into City Hall, it's all hoo-ha, I'm all pumped up. Kevin White says, sign the book, give me a copy, I want to give it to my wife. And look at all the cool stuff I built in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. All right, we're going to start. This is the Bridge of Sighs, right? This is about 1805, the old picture, 1820. It's a, it's a French engraving. Uh, this was built uh, across here, okay? This is the old neck. This is the old land form of the, of the 17, you know, 1800 Boston. And this is, uh, this is the Fort Point Channel, right? And the, the bridge went across here, okay? And so you got these great views of the city, right? You can see the, the tower. And the, there's the newly completed uh, state house, about 1800. And uh, it's dominated by church spires. And, the, and the, the, uh, the view I took in 2005 is, is still full of artery uh, relocation construction. Now, note, note how much infrastructure stuff, 20th century infrastructure there. We're going to come back to this picture at the end of the lecture, OK? Bridge of size. And I have a wonderful quote. Uh, this is from Whitehill's book. You want to you get this story in detail. It's Boston Topographical History, Walter Muir Whitehill. Um, He's kind of stodgy, but he, he's pretty cool. Listen to this. Uh, 
that South Boston Bridge had little success attracting settlers to South Boston, but it fur furnished a fashionable promenade for Boston re residents because of its agreeable view of the town. On the bridge in 1821, Josiah Quincy had the, his first vision of the ravishing Emily Marshall walking with a gentleman, another gentleman. It, it, Quincy never married Emily Marshall and, and named the bridge the Bridge of Size. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna come back to this at the end of the lecture, right? There's the tadpole, right? The old man form. And we, the, the rest of it, the light gray is made land, right? It's, it's filled, right? All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> these are straightforward uh, reproductions, uh, recreations of, of Harry Houdini uh, about to be tossed into the Charles River in 1908 uh, as, as part of his, what he, what he did, shackled. And uh, we reenacted it for Cityscapes with John de Villers, who, who promised, this is Renata von Scharner, who, who promised to, uh, uh, de Villers promised Renata that he would clean up the Charles River by 2005 or she could throw him in. So she's about to chuck him in the river. <laughs> Uh, I think I think that, that these things happen again and again. Another uh, another infrastructure picture. Uh, this is 1914. These are the these are the construction workers that built Boston's newest link to the rest of the world, the Commonwealth Pier. It's now the World Trade Center. Um, the, the Commonwealth Pier was a was a groundbreaking infrastructure project over its time. The ships came in, offloaded freight on the upper terminals of the upper level. There was a viaduct which carried the freight, still there, been rebuilt. It, it carried the freight out by truck, and the trains came in on the, on the bottom level. Right? I mean, Boston got the transfer thing down perfect. Okay? They really did it right. And here we all are. These are all the guys, all the John Drew and all this, the, the Massport guys uh, doing the Ted Williams Tunnel in 1996. Right? Uh, groundbreaking, hugely expensive, and cutting edge infrastructure projects. Here we are back again with uh, the first picture. The first pair was uh, North Bennett Street School. Uh, the old picture was from the Schlesinger Library. It was the graduation class. You know, these kind of these scruffy looking Italian kids going to learn manual arts. Well, this girl has a master's in English from Smith. And she got tired of doing office work, so she's learning how to make violins. <laughs> so North Bennett Street School, which is run by uh, uh, um, uh, Miguel Gomez Ibanez, is a, is a still relevant more than 100 years later uh, <laughs> because of its high quality training in, in uh, kind of artisanry and, and fine craftsmanship today. Anybody know where this is? These smart guys? Speak up. Yeah. Big prize. Salem Street. Yay! You got it. Salem Street. Nice going. Yeah. Salem Street. Anybody want you want to give, take crack to the date? Here's the end. Uh, one year off. Oh four. What happened in oh four? Who got assassinated? McKinley. McKinley. Yeah. See the see the commemorative portrait. Yeah. And then the Yiddish bookstore. Right? So um, this is one of these, I'm, I'm going to talk about a few neighborhoods, and I'm going to pick one landmass in Boston and follow it through uh, in maps and, and, and by different occupations and watch what happens to the land and the people on that land. Uh, but, but a couple things about the North End. Um, uh, not, not Italian at the outset, 50% Irish in, in the early, early days, 1850. And then, then successive waves of Russian, Polish, Jews, and then Italians by 1910. Speaking of Italians, he's my favorite guy. Uh, this is Fred. He, he pretty much did the big dig. He got the money, and he hatched the plan. And he, I think he's a genius guy. He, uh, combination engineer, political genius, and, and uh, just knows how to operate. Visionary, really. Here he is in 2000 at Y2K with his granddaughters, and then 10 years later, a little grayed out, right? <laughs> but, he, but the other is gone, right? And he pretty much did that. Um, <laughs> one of the worst times of the uh, North End was the molasses flood of 19, 
1918. Molasses was a key ingredient uh, in, in making um, munitions for World War I. The United States Industrial Alcohol had a giant tank of molasses on the north end, right near the, where the present Coast Guard station is. And they, uh, they transferred the molasses from ships to the tank, and then by railroad from the tank over to Cambridge, where they had a uh, distillery to make denatured alcohol that you need for, for making the munitions. And uh, the tank burst in, uh, in 17, and, uh, and then shot rivets like bullets across, killed 20 people, smothered horses in, in like three million gallons of brown goo. Okay, uh, my friend Bill Rankin is a genius map maker, and uh, I hope this is good. These are figure ground maps. The built form is in light gray. Okay, here's the Heinz, right, and the, here's the uh, and then and, and the downtown office towers. We're down in here someplace. Mm -hmm. uh, where's the here's the MFA? Uh, so we're right in here. Um, and these maps, you can. It, Boston is a series of balkanized villages. And you can see that here is the downtown guys. Here is the Beacon Hillers, right? Here are the North Enders, right? Here's the East Boston, right? Uh, the MIT kind of, it's almost like calligraphy, right? The medical, the medical uh, Longwood area, right? Southie, right? Finely textured, and the, and the finely textured um, uh, dots of, of Dorchester. <coughs> So this lets you get an idea of how much of the city we have physically made with our, with, by cutting down the hills, tri Tremont, Tri-Mountain, Three Hills. And can anybody name them? Come on. Oh, come on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, Cops. Cops Hill, the graveyard, the north end. Last one? Fort. Anybody know where Fort Hill is? There, there is a Fort Hill in Roxbury, but I'm talking about the one that's on the landmass. So we'll, get, we'll get to Fort Hill later. Don't worry about it. Okay? So, so I mean, you know, this was, this was kind of Roxbury's sewer. I mean, they just chucked their junk in and it was uh, nasty. The, the whole Back Bay story is, is one for another day. A couple more of these cityscapes things. Um, this, these are in exactly the same places. This is the New England Confectionery Building on Mass Ave in Cambridge. These women, uh, immigrants, are sorting you know, bonbons. Great job. And the same site, Novartis redeveloped that site for cutting edge pharmaceutical research. These women, it's their center for disease something. They, they invent diseases. <laughs> so the, the Novartis guys can, you know, try this one, guys. <laughs> so you, you, you start to, s this is encouraging stuff, I think, uh, that, that women scientists occupy some positions like this. Uh, this is Beacon Hill. So the, the north side, you know, Mount Fordham, right, the nasty side of the hill. This is the, 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 the Anderson Street. And Vilna Schul was, was uh, built about like 1910. And uh, here's the, the congregation. It, was, it fell to ruin in the 50s and 60s, as did a lot of the north side of the hill. And then this congregation came back, restored it, and, and here they are plopping a new skylight on top. It's a marvelous building, just a gem. Here's this map I ran it again. I colorized it. Um, the, you can, you can read the, the, the geography and the, 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 the texture of the city. You know, it, it, no other city has this kind of, it's almost like a, a, an essay of, of physical development. I think it's a beautiful thing. The, the roads are black, built form is in, in light. Okay, we're gonna start, so Fort Hill is right, international place, right there, okay? Right? So what happened was the original, what it, was, it was a hill that was 100 feet high, almost 100 feet high. That's where you put the cannons to 
blow the bad guys out of the water in 1700. Right? They, you cannot get into the harbor to get past that gun emplacement. <coughs> the, uh, the actual battery was right here on the water line. Right? Here's the bottom map of like 1720. Uh, you know, here's the battery. Okay? And the fort was, the, the hill was, was a, you know, one of the big, one of the tri mountains, right? One of the three, three mountains. And um, so it has huge strategic value. Uh, this is a, um, a, a sort of annotated map from, from around the revolution. And there's the, the gun emplacement again. And you see the build out of the wharves, right? Uh, much, some serious money was being beginning to be made in, uh, in this port. And it was a machine for, for the transfer of goods. Um, by, by about 1850, the Fort Hill was the place that, that Irish dock workers lived. They, they came here to escape the famine. They, had, they didn't have skills. And they were at the mercy of whoever was needed, needed uh, labor. And it became one of these kind of Charles Dickens kind of slums, a uh, bad living environment. And the city said, well, we want to <laughs> basically do slum clearance. So they knocked the hill down. And they, they, they paid the Irish to carry the dirt and fill in to make Atlantic Avenue, which, is, which linked the, the docks together by, by cart. Uh, the city was making money hand over fist. This is 1868. Um, here's, here's the fort, right? And this is the Fort Point Channel. And this is the newly drawn line of piers for the development of the South Boston Waterfront. Right? These, these are the, the, the existing South Boston Heights. That, that bridge of size was down in here, okay? down near where Dover Street is today. Right? So, and you can see what's happening. The railroads are starting to come around. They make this turn, and they feed into the direct connection to the docks. And this is where that, the, the uh, um, World Trade Center, the Commonwealth Pier, is built. Here's that. Here, here's the by by, night, by the, the 1930s. It was a lovely little park. Um, it had become it burned in 1872 and then was rebuilt again. And uh, that park stayed until here it is in 34. And this is 87 when they, uh, the, the the high street off ramp, which was on the central artery, uh, cut landed right there. Mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, this was the big thing in 1950. And, and on that off ramp, during the, the just prior to the construction of the Central Artery, Sidewalk Sam painted this picture, a memorial to Stephen Coyle, Rick DeMino, Fred Savucci, and Ray Flynn. Right? <laughs> two Irish, two Italian. Right? And they were the, the movers behind the Central Artery. Right? So um, the developer of International Place, Don Chiafaro, took the ramp down, and there's Don. And, <laughs> and he's the guy that wants to build the towers over the, the uh, harbor garage, which I think he should do, but that's another one. <laughs> um, all right, I want to run through some portraits. Uh, I, I did a show at the Athenaeum a, a, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and I photographed a bunch of Bostonians that I thought were like interesting people. And I have, this is John Sears. He's, he's your Brahmin, right out of Central Casting. Lives on Acorn Street, uh, died in the wool Republican. He was Suffolk County Sheriff at one point. He's, he's really been around. He's a, and, and he's a great friend of mine. And, and this is his typical place. You know, <laughs> kind of books, John? Um, in 1985, I did a photo essay for Boston College on emerging immigrant neighborhoods. I shot in Dorchester, Mattapan, East Boston. And I found these pictures, and I don't know who's in them. <laughs> if you recognize anybody, please come up after me. <laughs> uh, these, these, were, these were families settled in, and they were all, as you can see, glad to be here. Um, it was a really interesting show. And I, I just. 
kick myself for not having better documentation. This was uh, East Boston. Yes. Okay. 85. Well, this is Dorchester. Real mix. I, I think this is, um, you know, uh, uh, Dominicans. This is a, a congregation that took over one of the old Episcopal churches in JP. Great, great folks. You know, I mean, it's it's happening. You know, these folks are, they got auto body shops, cleaners, whatever, right? It's, kids can get to college. And I'm ending, I'm bookending this with uh, my buddy, uh, this is the Christopher Plummer Professor of Christian Morals at Harvard University. Right? <laughs> and uh, I, he's, he's a, just a fabulous guy. All right. Uh, the other book that you got to know about is called The Zone of Emergence. It's published in 1912. And it's, it's a century ago looking at, at the, the, the immigration, the, the, the uh, assimilation issue. And uh, it has all the kind of jaded, um, it's, it's condescending book, right? About we're, we're, we're uplifting these poor downtrodden slumps, you know? <laughs> Thanks to us, they're gonna make it. You know? But it's fascinating study of what's happening in the city literally 100 years ago. Um, here's, here's another thing about like graffiti. Uh, look here, let me see, or are you MFA, right? Mm -hmm. This is the, the water, this is the fence, mm -hmm. right? And so we're across from the MFA right here, right? Are we in here someplace? Yes. Yeah. 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 So making the bridge across the Ruggles, right? The, the, the T station, which reaches across the tracks, it links together. Get, the, the, here's the old scar from infrastructure, right? From the Southwest Corridor, you know, get, get reaching across it. So it's all about how physical and social bridges are, are equally important. Next thing you ought to do is go to the US Census, uh, interactive census maps. Uh, they are, you can look up any town in the United States and, and see these maps. Um, green is white, uh, you know, here's the typical, you know. Bl blacks or blue, Hispanic, and <coughs> here's a Hispanic, right, it's East Boston, right? Um, and Asian, so there's these four so I spent some time on these maps, and here's, I'm gonna blow one up. Oh, this is a percentage of foreign born. The darker the blue, the higher the percentage of foreign born. So you can see where people land. Rents are cheap, where you can get in, start to work, right? Get going. And here's a blow up. And you can get from almost down to the street, right? And so here's the, this is the kind of Dorchester, Uphams, you know, Southie, all, all, all green, and it's all white. And here's the mixed kind of areas. And so you start to look. I started to look at these maps because I'm visual. I said, well, where, where do I get the real po polka dot you know, real, all the colors of the rainbow, right? So I looked around, and I wanted, uh, I found only five census districts in all of Austin where you got a quadruple double. That's more than 10% of each of these four races, right? So they're Brighton near St. E's Hospital, rebuilt. Upham's Corner, Arbor Point, and East Boston. And uh, uh, Reedville didn't count, but I, I'm fascinated by Reedville, so I put it in there. Um, <laughs> and you know, and as you might imagine, you, you go what you go Brookline, Newton. I'm, I'm like 93% white, right? And then we got like 6% uh, genius Chinese, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, cr it's cr and Weston, you know, it's just it's horrible, right? Um, so here they are, right? Saint, uh, and my friend who works at St. E's said, well, they employ a ton of, of Haitians and Cambodians, right? And it's, it's a good job base. These districts are small, they're only 4,000 people. So they're really fine cuts. Um, uh, Up corner is where the, 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 the predominantly black Roxbury rubs up against the, the kind of more white side of, of Southie and Satin Hill. So you get a lot of, a lot of mix in there, right? Um, Reedville is the same thing. There's a college down there, and then there's an old Irish white, you know, been there forever kind of population. And so you get this amazingly even mix. And then a Harbor Point I'll talk about in a little bit. 
it, here's Harbor Point. So Columbia Point was this Stygian, um, uh, you know, bad public housing. Right, uh, eighty percent of the units were unoccupied. The other twenty percent were druggies. Right, this is 19, uh, 1970. And here's the corner, 1954. Here's the cornerstone, and, and here it is after Corcoran Jenison and Joan Goody re re rebuilt, kicked the drug addicts out, got rental units in there, and now it's you get a two bedroom for 1,600. You know, you get a view of the city. There's no there's no drugs. It's it's a real entry point, and it's it's one of these triple double places. So these guys get my vote. And then these are my buddies at uh, Codman Academy. This is Bill Walzak, he's pretty famous. He started the Codman Square Health Clinic. Uh, his friend Mick Campbell started the school. That's the high school that has 150 kids. And they, they don't care where you come from, and 100% get into college. I mean, it's, it's, it's a crazy good school. And there's some of the students. So I mean, you know, you call this place. 20 times, we'd be in good shape. Okay, I'm gonna finish up here. Uh, we're back at the Bridge of Sides, you ready? Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, we're no longer at 1820, we're, um, we're 50 years later in 1870, and what's happened is all the railroads have come through there on that, on that corridor. Mm -hmm. It looks like this, but with railroad tracks, okay? And standing on the bridge, this is out of uh, White Hills book. Standing on the bridge is this Mary Antinowitz from Polotsk, Poland. She's an, Im she's an immigrant. And here's the quote. I like to stand leaning on the bridge railing and look down on the dim tangle of railroad tracks below. I could barely see them branching out, elbowing, winding, and sliding out into the night in pairs. I was fascinated. So would I be, swift on my rightful business, picking out my proper track from the million that cross it, pausing for no obstacles, sure of my goal. Thank you. Thank you.